Oh, it's not good, is it, mate? No. I thought he was taking a piss at first. So did I. <laughs> Are anyone breaking a Type R? <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. And we've got a fun day today. We're taking the Civic. You remember the Civic? The last video we got, we actually purchased this from Coal Pipe. Uh, it's been having some work done for about six or seven months. Well, has it been that long? A long time. Today we're taking this down to get some mapping and some getting them all checked over by quite a renowned mapper down here. So it's going to be a fun day. We've already had some issues this morning. We've been starting this car on and off for the last week. This morning we started it, we started it again and we've just gone to leave and it wasn't starting. We don't know why it wasn't starting. We've got it started by bumping it. We changed the battery, it wasn't that. But just, I think there might be some sort of immobiliser issue or maybe a starter issue. We'll get that checked out today. Luckily, We've got it running. We'll go over exactly what the Civics had done. Uh, Neil, Neil knows everything because he's been spending the money. But yeah, we're going to have some mapping, we're going to have some dinos, and we're going to have a fun day with some cars. So I hope you enjoy the vibe with us. You got me down again. It's not good, is it, mate? No. We're here at Perfect Touch. Uh, Remains looking at the car, and uh, yeah, the Civic on the Dyno made full power, 150 brake horsepower. Yeah, I, I, it's, I actually went in it. It's 148 horsepower. 148 horsepower. I think it was um, 148. So it's, it's not good, mate. Uh, Remain thinks it's uh, the exhaust is blocked somewhere, which is causing. It's just problems. so weird because everything's new on it, isn't it? Yeah, the new manifold, new exhaust, new air intake, everything, and it drives completely smooth. Yeah. But he said it's. On VTEC, it's nothing, it's just flat curve, just flat. He, he was basically saying that it's, uh, I thought he was taking a piss at first. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, with the mods that you've got, I can send you a base map, yep. and you'll know straight to where the field's okay. Yep. If it doesn't, yep. I mean, there's still something wrong. Yeah, okay. Find the issue, so yep. then I can send you a map, and then you can try again and be like, yeah, yep. fine, all sorted. Yeah? Perfect, yeah, thanks. He was saying that um, he thinks it's the manifold, not, not the flexi. This is collapsing on the inside. Yeah, but it's the so manifold. weird though because we, we would have seen that when we put it on, wouldn't we? Yeah, it was fine. It looked brand new. It literally, it's nothing wrong with it. Like, you couldn't tell. And it, that can't have happened in the 10 miles it's driven. No, <laughs> to unless miles. it's a faulty product. And he was saying it could be the engine, but he was saying he highly doubts it because it runs so smooth down low. Yep, it feels completely fine. Timing. So we're just going to have to just take the exhaust off. And hope it's that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's not that, the engine's it gone. Not, anyone breaking a Type R? <laughs> Should we do a compression test when we get home? Yeah. Yep. But the rev limiter is, already, is um, 5,000 RPM anyway, yep. just for safety. So take it out and if it comes on VTEC hard, then we probably fix the problem. You'd feel the uh, you'd feel it straight away. Yep. Try to go full throttle yep. in third gear yep. from 2,000 RPM. Yep. Five. Yep. What you feel is just like struggling, like something is slowing it down. Yep. If you find something, take it. You should feel the difference straight away. Right. So we got back to the office. Uh, we're going to go and check a few things. Now we need to check the knock sensor because apparently that's not giving any reading, and apparently the O2 sensor is giving a terrible reading. Now, when the car came to us, it didn't have a manifold. So we're just brainstorming if it even had an O2 sensor. First two things I'm gonna check right now are if the knock sensor's plugged in and if it has one, and if the O2 sensor is plugged in and if it has one. And then we're gonna move on once we've got the jack to jack it up and have a look at the exhaust. And also, we're going to do a compression test anyway because it'd be nice to, nice to see we need to put the compression tester to good use okay so the knock sensor is just right underneath the manifold going into the block and it's not a good start because uh, there isn't one there's just an empty thread there uh not good for a start i've just took out all the coil packs and all the spark plugs and we're going to do a compression test i'm going to go and grab neil 
in a second. Um, all the spark plugs look fine, so let's get the compression test and just rule it off. And we pretty know, we know, or we think the health, the engine's healthy. Just while we're here, we may as well check it. But we haven't got a knock sensor at all, so yeah, that, that's not good. Yeah, go on. Good. Okay, that one's good. That was good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. What did we get? Same again, 180. Yeah, good. Again? Yeah, 180. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good. Right. Woo! <laughs> so it's not the engine. <laughs> Passed the test. We well done. <laughs> that's, that's like that's that was perfect all the way across all four. The fact there's no knock sensor in there, that would make sense. That it's just running on like some sort of like limp mode. Because obviously it needs that to to uh, to recognise detonation, and without that, I think it would just been like a limp mode. But what do I know? So we've got underneath the car, and um, we have two. There are two old two sensors. They're both plugged in and they look pretty much brand new as well. So we've got a compression. We've got all two sensors. The only thing it's got to be is that knock sensor. And a lot of people were saying on YouTube, the reason why my EP was running crap was because this old two sensor, uh, the knock sensor, sorry. And the fact we've not got one at all. It's just a hole. I don't, I, that, that, I don't know where that hole goes. Is that just a hole in the block? Well, it pissing out oil if it was. But it's in a very awkward position, so you can't really get your hand in there, but it's got to be that. But the thing is, we can't find the wiring for it either. But it'll be around there somewhere. I just, no, I don't, we just don't know what we're looking for. We've got to get this off. I think it would help. So if we take the inlet off, I think we'll be able to get in that side, so underneath. So, O2 sensor. How about about 200 quid? Uh, for, uh, for the... Knock uh, sensor, sorry, I keep saying it. 90. Oh, 90 quid for knock sensor, so... I think the next plan would be knock sensor in and then take it for a drive. Neil was saying it, it how, how slow is it when you're driving? Uh, like It feels fine up until 3,500 RPM, it feels like a normal Type R and it just, go, it just goes flat after that. It's yeah. almost like someone just put a bung in the exhaust. It just it just goes mm, and stops so, right. and just does the same. Even in VTEC, it doesn't even go anywhere. It go, it, VTEC engages, but the car doesn't go any faster. So it's noticeable? Noticeable. It, yeah. look, it, it feels like someone's put a one inch exhaust on it. Right. So it, it can breathe up to three and a half thousand RPM and yeah. then it just it just dies. So, um, I mean, Remain said that try these things first, but... Should we take the... Should we have a look and see if that flexi's collapsed inside? Potentially. Yeah, I mean, may if, as well. If, if, if the knock sensor isn't there or not functioning, mm -hmm. it's going to run rich and fill it full of fuel. So the exhaust gas temperature is going to be high, I would have thought. So that's not going to help the flexi, is it? I may as well, but whilst it's on jacks, may as well have a quick look. Yeah, so we'll take that off real quick. Yeah, we need a knock sensor, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've just got underneath, uh, and the exhaust is totally fine. Um, it's it's not, the flexi isn't crumpled as as uh, the guy said it could be an issue. So we've checked everything, the compression's fine, compression's fine, O2 sensors are fine, uh, and the exhaust is fine. So there has to be that knock sensor. So we're going to order a knock sensor and hopefully that fixes our issues and we'll take it out for a drive. So we're gonna have to wait till that gets delivered from Honda. So I guess we'll see you in the next episode. And will the knock sensor fix our issue? Let us know in the comments.